being here and I'm here with you at part eight. Um, I went ahead and bought a new motor because the other one didn't spec out. I know it's a shame. I spent a lot of time painting that. Uh, but I found this one. It's a uh, 1982 and never had power steering on it. I've already done that. Uh, it had uh, an old distributor or had a vacuum advanced distributor and obviously a lot bigger and bulkier. And it had a better coil and stuff like that. This is the coil off of mine. But uh, it's basically a lot simpler. Uh, I'm getting rid of all the vacuum stuff and uh, I'm getting rid of all the emissions too. I've already pulled out the carbon tank and stuff like that. And back there is what I've got sorted out what I think is emissions. I just want to double check before I cut it all off. That's pretty much how much I need for the gauges right there for the gauges to the truck uh, and the heater and stuff but the rest of it is useless uh, this is all ignition and it, a lot of the ignition was uh, like kind of uh, sunk into the vacuum sensors and stuff which is really annoying so I gotta go through that and repair everything because all that's messed up but I got this for an extra 50 bucks, this carburetor, and uh, it's a four barrel. Oh, and this intake, it's actually 1996 Ford inline six truck intake with fuel injectors. And somebody plugged them off and put the, uh, cut the hole in the top for the carburetor and got that all worked out and they said it ran good, so. It's also got dual headers, so this is going to be a lot more powerful than the uh, original setup with the small little one barrel carb. Look at all that vacuum stuff on there, all that emission stuff just scattered around it. Not going to have to worry about that anymore because they didn't have that in 1960 as far as I know. But yeah, that'll simplify that, but I just wanted to update you probably wonder what was going on but I'm also gonna cut this off for the smog pump or just leave it and not worry about it uh, I broke the temperature sensor I need to buy a new one of these but uh, the alternators coming in the mail flywheel pilot bearing because that's not in there uh, I'm gonna get the clutch aligned and stuff and I'm gonna put it in there hope it runs good with all the stuff that I'm taking out, I'm not too sure. But it, I, when I was getting the uh, thing timed, and I put the towel in there to test whether it was on its compression stroke or not, I, the thing probably flew out about 10 feet, or it would have if there wasn't a wall there. And uh, that's obviously not a very accurate test for how good the compression is, but I think it'll be good. So. Definitely going to run a lot better than the last one with all the stuff that they did to that. And I also power washed earlier. So you can see all the crap on the ground down there. That's how much stuff came out of here that was bad. But I'm going to go ahead and keep working on this wiring until I can get it figured out. It's all a big mystery right now. It's kind of a mess. But that's really the only thing that I need to do in order to get this engine back in here. And I've got all the trim pieces and stuff up in there. Need to buy a new window. That was my fault. Shot it out. And the interior isn't that bad, so. And what I ended up spending way more money than we needed to on that other stuff, whereas we spent $250 on this engine, which comes like that. So it's not really that hard to put some exhaust on it and hook up the things that needed to be like it only took me a couple hours to sort that out it's a shame to see that people just rattle can this without sanding it down whereas I spent hours and hours sandblasting mine <laughs> it's kind of a shame but it oh well I'm not gonna do that again definitely not taking this one apart if it runs it runs and it's gonna stay in this truck but I just wanted to update you